Welcome to the Site 65 podcast. I'm your host, Robert Tomato Peterson of the research department here at Site 65. And with me, as always, is Keegan, senior researcher Keegan. How are you? I'm very tired. Yeah, I, I feel that. I feel that. Um, but we do have some, uh, we do have a couple new people joining us at this table this week. Uh, we have, uh, I believe your name is Ethics Assistant Archangel? That'd be correct. Ah, welcome, welcome. Um, very excited to have you here. It's not often that Ethics takes an interest in us research and our daily activities. So, um, just, you know, introduce yourself to the, uh, people around the different sites listening. Okay, well... Of course, my name, my code name is Argento, and my real name is uh, Seth Kruger. I'm, of course, assistant for the ethics committee. I do all sorts of work for them, uh, documentation, uh, test authorizations, and inspections on oversight of any and all ethical uh, problems. I am an ex-ranger in the 75th Ranger Regiment in the U.S. military, and I'm now serving as an assistant in SI-65 for the SCP Foundation as of now. Wonderful. Well, we're very happy to have you at this table joining us for this podcast. Sorry it's a little janky. We didn't expect to have a lot of people today, so your mic is a little kind of off, but I mean... That's fine. We'll we'll make it work. Um. Anyways, we also have another person joining us, E11 Sergeant Halo. Halo, I know you don't have a lot of time to be here. You got to get back on your shift. So go ahead and introduce yourself. Hello, my name is Halo. I am a E11 Sergeant. Uh, I mean that's basically I I contain SCPs. There's nothing more to my job. Fair enough. Every, we all we need people to recontain these SCPs when they breach. So, uh, Halo, I'll start with you because, um, as I said, you got to get back on your shift. But um, uh, how'd you get involved with the Foundation? Um, a lot of us, like for me, I started with contracts and eventually worked my way into the research department. Uh, Keegan, you know, was transferred from a different site. Um, how'd you get started here? All right, so um, I first first of all I was in the Kuwaiti Army. Uh, I came into the into the foundation quite early. I reached the rank of Private First Class, and then I got an invitation to join the foundation, so I just accepted because it was a higher pay, and now I'm here. Oh, uh, I was enlisted in E11. Okay. All right. Well, we're very happy to have you here. Um, Ethics Assistant Archangel, um, Mm -hmm. um, you already you already kind of mentioned what you what you've done in the past. But, you know, if you there's anything more you want to say about how you got into the foundation, that'd be interesting for people to hear. Right. Well, as I mentioned before, I was a ranger in the U.S. military. I was um, a part of the Iraq and Afghanistan tours of duty, of course, with my regiment. We uh, put took in uh, many uh, operations, which I'm not fit to uh, detail here on the podcast. But um, long story short, I had uh, done something very notable in my life during a uh, mission where I, I actually gained the Medal of Honor uh, from the President Barack administration. Um, and after I received the Medal of Honor from the president, I was contacted by a foundation recruiter, and they put me in MTF NU7 first. Then I um, came up the ranks, and I applied for position of the assistant, and um, yeah, and uh, here I am now, right now, I suppose. Well, congrats on all your successes in the military, and uh, thank you for your service. And um, it's great to have you here. It's great to have all of you here. Uh, I guess we'll just go through what everyone's been up to the past couple days since uh, we last recorded. Me personally, um, I'm still on my little uh, vacation. It's been a while since I, um, you know, had time off. So I've been off, you know, 
kind of spending time with family, uh, spending time with loved ones that I didn't get to see in um, a while. And But I am allowed to come back on the site just to, uh, you know, spend time with you guys and record these shows because I do enjoy doing this. And I'm still surprised at the response we've gotten about these shows. People have been really positive about that. Unfortunately, we did have, you know, that GOC leak. But um, other than that, it's been very fun. Uh, Keegan, what have you been up to? I've been trying to get a 076 and 999 cross test approved. Oh yeah, I think you discussed that. I think you discussed that on a previous episode. Yeah. Okay. What do you hope to get out of that? Uh, more interactions with you know 076, understanding it further, its behavior, its behavioral patterns, all that good stuff. All right. Fair enough. Um, ethics assistant, uh, what have you been uh, up to this past week? Uh, we've been drowning in paperwork, to, to be honest. I was expecting to get do some documentation for the committee, of course, but I've been receiving a lot of paperwork to do, especially regarding the testing that uh, Mr. Keegan is trying to do. Um, there's been some concerns about his test, and I've been trying to overlook and oversee what kind of issues that he, that he may uh, encounter, and uh, hopefully I try to give him the green light for his um, testing, if possible. But generally, I've been um, drowning in paperwork, really, just uh, lots and lots of paperwork. Okay. Yeah, I get that. As, our, as research has, we also drown in paperwork as well. We're constantly fighting info breaches and such, because for whatever reason, people love to just put high classified documents into the uh, into the storage bins in uh, research bunks and then just leave them there. And oh, so yeah. any junior researcher can walk around and find them. And it's very obnoxious. Oh, Lord. Yes, it's uh, it's not fun. We've had to um, we've had to comb through the. Uh, document bins quite a lot the filing cabinets and we've found a lot of um information that should not be you know a junior researcher shouldn't know about 682 and yeah we've come across a lot of information like that and we've had to stem a lot of info breaches to dblock but um other than that it's been very calm um i believe halo uh halo mo- motion that he had to step away for a second so we'll get to him when he gets back um yeah all right i'm back now i had to go oh. deal with something that's fine it happens uh halo so uh what have you been up to this past week i mean strangely there haven't been that many breaches lately so i've kind of just been chilling in bunks or at the checkpoint chatting with other 11 like that's what most of my time is made out of and dealing with annoying researchers at checkpoints, like always. Yeah, I'm sorry about that. I'm sorry about the amount of researchers who can be a bit of a bother at the checkpoints. Like, I get it. Like, they want to test and stuff like that. But at the same time, they need to show you guys the proper respect that you deserve. Um, I'm definitely going to hold a lecture on that when I get back on site at the end of my LOA and talk to them about that because yeah it it can be an issue sometimes but a lot of a lot of researchers get antsy because you know when things breach and we're stuck in pw all day we just want to test and it could be a bit annoying but yeah so i apologize if research is making your job a little tough we'll have to um stem that when we can um so, other than that, I actually wanted to talk about something. Um, you mentioned the uh, lack of breaches. That's been very surprising for me as of late, because typically we have, you know, one to two breaches a week, and typically it's something like 7722 that just, like, breaks out of his containment and starts running around asking people if they believe in God and stuff like that, and then shooting them if he doesn't. But this week's been calm and peaceful so 
is it just because E eleven has been stepping up their game, or like what's been going on? Have we? Impl- I don't think we've implemented any new containment procedures for any of these SCPs. No, we have actually. Oh, we have. We what have. have we done? Yeah, we've uh, upgraded our force field. Oh no shit! Yeah, I did that's not why. That. Huh. I was wondering why the but, force fields looked a little different. Um, but, um, as a result of that, I do end up getting paid less because, you know, I don't have to do my job as often. Wait, you get paid by recontainment? Yeah, I mean, that's what most of my pay comes from. And, you know- like... You yeah. don't get paid just a flat salary like the rest of us? No. What? That's crazy. You're doing the most dangerous job. I know, but it just sucks. Uh, wh- wow. Um, That's uh, life. Yeah. If, if I may I, interject here, gentlemen, I don't mean to make you panic about his salary, though. He gets paid a lot and a lot of money, and quite handsomely, too. I believe he gets paid around um, $10,000 per week containment. Well, he gets paid around uh, 5000 for any uh, safe class anomaly, uh, 10000 for any Euclid, and um, I believe it's around... Seventeen five hundred thousand dollars for any Keter uh, anomalies, like a six eight two or so. He gets paid a lot, ha- really handsomely. Don't get it wrong. Well, good. I'm glad they do the you know the toughest job on the site, recontaining these SCPs. I mean, most of the time when an SCP breaches, I'm just sitting in you know breach shelter on the, one of those couches, just sitting there. So I understand him getting paid. I I didn't realize it was like that. Um, yeah, it kind of scared me for a second. I was like, oh god, I hope we're you know I hope the foundation is paying them enough money. Um, yeah, wow. Um, so, Mister E Eleven Sergeant, um, what in your opinion has been like the craziest breach you've seen? Um, like, what's the craziest story you have? site. Alright, this is actually quite a very interesting one. 6A2 was once passive during a breach. Really? Yeah. So, uh, he didn't attack anyone, he just attacked the people who were shooting at him. If someone didn't shoot him, then he would be fine with it. Then, for some reason, he just made his way to... Um, the site director's office and talked about his containment procedures because he says he's in a lot of pain from the acid he's always trapped in. So that's why he always gets so angry during breaches. And that's why he's so violent, but he just decided to rest it off easy for once. And now, I mean, the site director since then has resigned, sadly. But maybe soon we will get new containment procedures and we'll have less 62 breaches. I always thought it was kind of cruel that we kept him in a vat of acid, but like I get it. I mean, you know, he is extremely dangerous. Yeah, he, he is extremely him. dangerous, extremely violent, and we have to contain him at some level. Like if we can't just like hold him in a metallic claw all day, like I mean like, uh, have you seen 966's containment? That thing is a wild animal. It's not even sapien, yet we keep it in, like, a metal cube. Yeah. I've been trying to talk about this about that. I'm going to. I'm about to write a whole report. Are you talking... Wait, did you say 966 or 096? No, 966. Okay, then. I was confused, because it's like, we also keep 096 in a metal cube. To be fair, it's good that we keep that in a metal cube. Yeah, I mean, that, that one actually makes sense. Um... Most most of the time, it just walks around the eastern wall and just kind of paces and cries. So, yeah. mm-hmm. um, ethics assistant, uh, mm-hmm. I'll pass the question on to you. What's the uh, what's the craziest thing you've seen on site so far? 
Oh, craziest sight on sight. Oh, boy. Oh, Lord. Well, I had this most recent uh, case regarding a research trying to weaponize SCP-912, the SWAT armor. Um, he was trying to arm him with an M249 Bravo, an LMG that is um, very proficient in laying down suppressive fire and heavy amounts of bullets. Now, I told him to only find out what 912 can do regarding with a gun. That's all I told him to do. And five minutes later, I, I get called in to the interrogation room, and guess who I see, Lord and behold? The researcher arrested with other two guards. And um, the reason they arrested him for was something so ridiculous, so outrageous, it got me so angry, I began speaking my native German at them. It was so ridiculous. Wow. Um, wow. I don't think I should say the reason why they arrested him, the researcher and his guards, but I'll give you a hint. They arrested him for um, <clears throat> something regarding his body, simple as. But oh um, that's all I have to say. Yes. God, we have so many researchers who just want to do dumb testing. Like, I get it, it can be hard to come up with ideas for tests. I completely understand that. Um, but at the same time, we have ethics in place, we have morals, we have codes that we have to follow. It's just annoying when you get, you know, a new researcher who's transferred to the site and they think they just have free reign to do whatever they want to whatever SCP. It's, it's just annoying. And the other day, I walked in and someone had tied a rope around 999 and it just hung him from the ceiling and was just watching him swing back and forth. That's messed up. Yeah, it's just, oh, it's just obnoxious. Um, and like I said, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna say, like, I haven't thought of, like, bad testing before. I've definitely thought of bad testing before. Hell, the most recent test I did before I went on my LOA was opened up 682's head and took out half his brain. That's not the smartest thing to do. But I did it for study. And he grew back the other half of his brain, and he's fine now. So, you know, all in all, I'd say it's not the end of the world. But at the same time, man, people just need to learn that testing is, you know... There has to be science behind it. There has to be some value to it. Yeah. People don't understand that. Uh, Keegan, uh, I feel like I feel like I've asked you this before. Um, but what's the craziest thing you've seen on site? Craziest thing I've seen on site. Um, yes. There's a lot I've I've seen. Uh, at least 14 years kind of really peddled down to I think it was when like I saw 049 at one point I don't know what was wrong with him I didn't get the full story but he was glowing like his eyes were glowing it was like the weirdest like phenomenon to me I've never seen him like that and he actually sounded kind of normal huh instead of like being like the old you know how it usually is. Yeah. And I think I think it doesn't take the cake for the worst thing, but it does take the cake for like the strangest thing I've seen. Okay. Did I did you guys ever hear about the time 049 tried to host a lecture in lecture hall? No, I have not. Um Oh, he does that all the time. Yeah, but when I first got transferred to the site and I didn't real and and 049 got transferred I didn't realize that he would, like, try to do that. So I woke up one day on site, and I got ready, and I heard the projector in lecture hall going, and I thought, oh, it's kind of early for a lecture to be held. So I walked in there, and 049 was just standing by the lecture, looking over some documents, writing stuff with a guard next to him. And I was stunned. I was like, oh my god, it's 049. Like, run away. And he turns to me, he goes, hello, researcher. And I go... What 
what what are you doing in here? And he goes, oh, I'm here to host a lecture about the petulance. I hope that's all right. And I went, uh... I took the guard to the side and said, hey, um... How did he get in here? And the guard says, look, I don't know. I just kind of walked in and he was standing here. So he seems very keen on hosting this lecture. And I said, okay, I mean, if he's going to host a lecture, I'll have people show up. So I had the research department show up in hazmat suits. And I had everyone else show up in hazmat suits. And 049 hosted... I'm not going to call it a good lecture. I'm not going to call it a bad lecture. It was kind of a nonsensical lecture about the pestilence. He kind of just talked at random about various diseases he'd seen through his travels and stuff like that. But he was very polite to the entire thing. And he didn't try to, like, you know, cure anyone, which I thought was very surprising. But um, it was... Incredibly weird to be having a lecture done by 049, especially when no one really knows how he got in here. And then apparently after the lecture, he just said, thank you, walked out of lecture hall. And before we know it, he was back in his containment. So like no clue how he got there. No clue how he got back. Very weird. I have seen a, um, a lecture, and speak on this topic, a lecture by SCP-7722, and um, this lecture was him reading the Bible and teaching the Bible to many people of the site, like everyone that you could think of, researchers, guards, NTF, administration, even D-class. I saw him take two D-class and baptize them in front of everyone, tell them to go do no more harm. And once he went to grab his weapons to quote unquote go get more heretics, he was contained right immediately. And I was like, how did he preach the Bible and baptize two D class with no water? I'm, I was so surprised. Yeah, that is that is strange. I don't even know if seven seven two two is proper eyes. Like, does he have eyes underneath the, um, the suit of armor? That's kind of a loaded question, I realize. I mean, we have not done any x-ray uh, testing on him, but then again, he's full of metal and steel that probably wouldn't work with an MRI machine. So, speaking of which, this is a good uh, test. For the research department to do actually now I think of it. She has mm. been trying to see if there's anything beneath that armor all this time. That's a, that's a good thing. That would be interesting. Because it's not like a 912 situation where we can clearly see that the armor is empty. We don't really know what's under the armor. We just know that I mean he can clearly see to some capacity because he can read the Bible. That is a good um, point, actually. Yeah. But, um, yeah, we're getting towards the uh, end of this uh, lunch break for the day. So uh, I think we could um, end it off here. We've had some good discussions for the day. So I'll just open it up to you guys for final notes. Um, we'll start with uh, the sergeant. Uh, sergeant Halo, do you have anything you want to say? Uh. Remember when I told you about 682 being passive? Yes. Uh I think the I think it's now the department director but uh, Darby he he conducted the interview with 682 when he was still a executive researcher. Oh really? And uh, yeah, we learned some very interesting things. Uh okay. he liked sour grapes over humans and he liked playing uh plants vs. zombies garden warfare 2 i mean i don't know how he even plays it game. yeah it is i i love that game i mean yeah it is weird how he would play it and where he would get to play it but um yeah so that's strange um anyways uh Archangel, 
Do you have yeah. anything you want to say? Uh, well, speaking of which, I just, um, um, oh, Lord, I have to get to the, uh, to me, the officer, someone took a hostage over there again. Oh, Lord. Oh, well, I'm sorry. That's fine. We're, uh, ending off this, uh, episode, so you're free to go. Uh, thank you very much for showing up. It's greatly appreciated for you to, uh, pop in and, you know, join us. Of course, no, I have to run. Hold on. Oh, well, I'll see you guys at, at, at dinner then. Goodbye. Oh. Bye. Uh, Keegan? Yep. Uh, anything you would like to say? Uh, not necessarily. You know, okay. same old, same old. Okay. Well, if that's the case, then I feel like... Hold on one second. What? Do you guys hear that? Oh, fuck. Oh, god damn it. Okay, um... Looks like seconds here. Hi, second. Hello? Looks like you had your comms again. Yeah. Well, second. It's nice to hear from you again. What the fuck are you doing? Huh? The hell are you doing on the comms console? An unauthorized frequency open. What the fuck do you think you're doing? I'm just talking to my good friend. Ah, right. On a foundation frequency. Well, obviously. Do you even apply operational security common sense? Yeah. Have you heard of operational security ever? Um, maybe. It seems quite not so, because you've managed to not just info breach information about multiple different objects, but also are communicating with the fucking enemy without it being a negotiation. I am... disappointed is an understatement. I am close to having the two gentlemen I brought with me line you against the wall and introduce you to what we usually do with traitors. I I'm sorry, can I interject here? Uh, second, who is this man yelling at you? Oh, hi, I'm a superior. You're oh. fucking time out. Now, I'm going to make this clear. I understand that you're on your off time, but breaching every right of informational security to a hostile faction is an absolute fucking no-go. So... I'm going to be more forced to, under reach, reaches and reason of informational security, to monitor every bloody conversation. I will make this clear now. If you're so, if Mr. Uh, if the guy in charge of TU wasn't so kind to let you stay around, you would not be sitting in the seat here, but you'd be currently in a hole somewhere. You may continue, only because Mr. Marauder thinks you can stick around. Be aware okay. of that and be thankful. Okay. Uh, oh, oh, well. I, I guess we have... A, yeah, I, I guess Second's allowed to stay. Uh, second, we were just about to end off this, uh, this episode. Um, you, you, you kind of picked a bad time to join, but at the same time, I mean... I, as long as you're not in trouble, like, we're, we're happy to have you around. Um, oh, also, uh, second, uh, just so you know, uh, you're, you're also talking to an E-11 sergeant. Okay. Hey, that's okay, I only deal with breaches, I don't deal with CI. That's Fair Henry Seventh job. Alright, well, with that, I'm gonna say, since lunch break is basically over... Uh, this episode's done. Thank you very much for listening. This has been the Site 65 podcast. I am your host, Robert Tomato Peterson. Thank you to all my co-hosts for joining me today. And, um, yeah, practice safe research. Have a good day.